40 meters of underground run. That is not very good. Oh, it's not good for your back, this. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna get him to mount it all himself. Bingo, bongo, bango. Not bad at all. Bit of a fast morning this morning. I have to swap vans back again. And uh, I've kind of loaded the higher van up with stuff because I thought we was going to have it a little bit longer. Put like loads of spare cable in there and stuff. I went to the unit and filled it up and now I've got to hold. Today I've got to fill this one back up. So I've got to get all the usual trimmings that come with this van added to the other stuff. So it's going to be a very full van today. And I've already sliced my finger, which is not cold. We've got quite a busy day ahead today. Sort out the van stuff, got to return the higher van and then we're going to fit an Anderson charge point, so that should be cool. I think it's going to be quite an interesting route. Like we've got to take it underground through a duct, so I have no idea what size it is either. We've got to get two cables through there, we've got to get our armoured cable and also an armoured Cat 5 cable, so that should be a, a, a big bag of fun. And yes, I am sporting my Chicago Bulls cap. No, sorry Americans, in England when you wear NBA stuff, it doesn't necessarily mean you support that team, you know, like whenever I've gone abroad and there's been Americans, oh my gosh, you, you like balls? <laughs> have you ever seen Dennis Rodman in series? I have not, I've never seen Dennis Rodman live before, however, I just like the cap and the colours. So the van actually was broken, believe it or not, but apparently it's not meant to break down all the time, but we had to wait for ages, it's been in there for like over a week, because they, they had to see it full. They couldn't take our word for it that there is a fault. They had to see it happen. It's been in for a while. They said there's nothing wrong with it. We've done a health check. Battery's fine. And then, would you know, they go to start it up and it dies. It doesn't start. So it was in fault after all. <laughs> Macaulay Culkin's back. Or Macaulay's Culkin. <laughs> the van's sorted now, I think. Fresh battery, fresh alternator belt. So hopefully we shouldn't have that problem. We're just going to crack on Finn's van up with stuff and we'll be back to you shortly. Be my own camera man today. <laughs> Is it a consumer unit sticker? Get it out. Right, a nice amount of fairy liquid in there. Right, so I, I don't trust this string. We've got to pull through a three core six mil SWA and an armored Cat 5. I think it will just snap. So I'm going to pull through a drum of this. Yep, go for it. I'm a lot more confident putting strain on that than I am putting strain on that little string. And I'm hoping as well it will kind of help pull the, the fairy liquid into the run as well before I even put the cable on it. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm out of, that was 50, that uh, must have had some nicked off it. Go on, surely, pull that last little bit. Oh my goodness, this is a ridiculously long run. That first bit of pulling is not gonna be much strain. It's only gonna be that last little bit getting it through where it's gonna be a real struggle. So I might still tie onto that. I'm gonna strip that back, tie onto the end of that, use that still as my draw and then when it pulls out you know we can cut the string yeah it's fine mate come over here this job is going to go one of two ways either it's going to be an absolute dream or we're going to be here all night because this conduit doesn't work properly i'm using mother nature's knee pads skin oh i can't remember it i used to know my knot I want a self-tightening like hitch knot Look, i'm gonna tie one like that I'll wrap that back through there that background that's pretty grippy you know pretty darn grippy is the technical term time to engage underbite all right Ruben very gentle and consistent pressure it's gone pretty smooth oh and copper bingo bongo bango takes two to tango keeps on yanking at that side to get more cable and just like pulls me down the pipe. If I was fully gripped onto that, I'd be down that pipe. Oh, it's not good for your back, this. It's going through really smooth and easy. You know I'm just gonna use all of this and get him, get him another thing sent on Amazon. I, I knew it was a long run and I knew some of it was underground. I did not realize that how much of the run was underground. That's like a good 40 meters of underground run. Look what we've got here. Oh, hi. Yeah. Oh, easy. Nice. <laughs> That'll do, nice Donkey. <laughs> do the. Nice. But I can't do it. 
Look at this, it's just moist gravel. <laughs> moist gravel. That sounds like a good band name. Sweet. Ah, oh, that's the wrong cable. <laughs> that should be enough. We'll chuck that back a little bit. Run it along. Charger there. Beautiful. Do you want to clean up all that string? Yeah, we'll just we'll chuck that string away. Here's a knife if you want to take some of it off. That was a dream. That so could have gone the other way. Where they've run it down, they've done it nice and smooth and swooping and they've done it deep enough and at downhill enough that it makes it easy. Sometimes when you do like bends or when it's a tight thing or they nip the pipe, it could just be a nightmare. But that was so easy. So what we're going to do here is this data cable. I'm going to run it along this way up and punch it into that flint there. So that's going to be a bit of a fun job trying to drill that hole in there. This power cable here, this is going to go along through and I've got this cut out here. We've taken all the um, weatherboard off, whatever you call it. So we can just take that out to run it through. And there's the mains there. So it's going to be coming through that little crack, through the gap and into the consumer unit. I'll show you better later when I get a torch in there. So in the meantime, I'm going to wash my hands, have my coffee and gloat a little bit of Nathan that we've got 60% of our cable done in like 10 minutes. That deserves a... Nice. I'll tell you what, although Quarry's Knot wasn't that great, in my opinion, and probably the opinion of many sailors and fishermen, I've been known to be a pro on Knotter. I've easily taken that off. So I guess Quarry does need me. Uh, what, the knife? Honestly, it just appeared out of thin air. It's there for aesthetic, you know. Yo, is it raining? Not loads to do outside, not a big deal. I had an idea to connect to that data socket, but I don't know if it's gonna work. Stick a little plug on there for him. Oh, they're for you, they're for you and Ruben, they're not for me. You know, hey. Nope, because I'm a healthy boy. If you think I'm putting that in my body, you can think again. Mm -mm -mm. So we've got a lovely walnut finish on this Anderson, which is just Tasty. They're not my favourite chargers ever, but in terms of aesthetics at the minute, I think they're just not being beaten. That is going to be mounted just there. So I'll probably clip the cables along underneath and straight up and in. We've had to use the hardwired CT just because we can't really rely on an internet connection from that far away without starting to use boosters and things. So we're just going to hardwire the internet connection into the Anderson. I really want Ruben to start being more useful with mounting things and that. And the only reason is not is because I've not been training him. I've not really been putting the time into doing that. So my hope today is I'm going to get him to mount it all himself. I might have to watch him struggle a little bit because you have to go through that. Like let him do it on his own. I'll just oversee him marking it, fixing it, getting it level, getting the heights right. Because what I'd like to do is be able to come to a job and say, right, you do that end. I'm going to do that end and be able to interchange. So how do you feel about that, Ruben? Mounting this on your own today? Oh, I mean, Give it a go. That might be an issue trying to get that into brick, but I can definitely watch you try a little bit. This is made for wood. Right. See where it's got the screw top? That screw oh, yeah. thread will bite into wood. Between okay. 1.2 and 1.4. Oh, what a genius! How did you know that? Do you watch hard sound metrics or something? Uh, 1.2 to 1.4 to where on the charger? To the bottom of it, to the middle of it, to the top of it? Like, uh, Oh man, I think it's to the top of it, isn't it? Yeah, well, to the top of the screen, I think, it's between yeah. 1.2 and 1.4. This hasn't got a screen, so I would just say 1.4 to the top, which conveniently is about the centre of that brick there. Cool. So we'll say that it was top out of that brick. So go on, I've put a level in there for you. I would always try and aim for a solid fixing. If our measurement is there and you have to go slightly off the measurement to get a better yeah. fix in, you don't want to fix into mortar. I often fix into it when I'm clipping cables because cables come and go. But right. something like this, there's a lot of strain that's going to be put on it. So Sorry. that's too high. That was it was that brick just there. Oh, yeah. About that sort of height. Yeah. Right. We'll just double check. Perfect. Try and hold the weight more in the middle because yeah. otherwise you're holding it off the wall, juggling it. <laughs> you want to press it against the wall so you've got friction on your side. I can help you, but I'm not because I'm being mean. <laughs> Because to to Yeah, exactly, and I want you to be able to do it on your own without me there. You think you can do these things, Nemo, but you just can't. <laughs> I'm eating fish tonight. Now, look, if I was doing it, I'd yeah. hold it like there. Right. I'd get it. I'd find wherever my markings are, so line them up. There you go. And now I've got the weight of it with this hand pushing it against the wall. Yeah. And now with that hand pushing against the wall, I don't need to look at the level because I can see it's not moving. I can just bomb, bomb. 
So we are doing it from scratch. I'm getting a rash on my legs. I'm really allergic to whatever this plant is. The only reason I'm not wearing trousers is because they're in the wash. I actually did not choose shorts day today. The shorts day chose me. This is not appropriate weather to be wearing shorts in. Mate, look at that wrist. Oh, oh look at that wrist yeah, action. My hands aren't big enough. Oh, <laughs> I'm not helping you, mate. Why did you look to me? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, neither do I. Let's see. Oh, pray for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> is that your mark or is... In fact, I'm, I'm, no, this is... If you screw it up, it's your screw up. Yeah. I think you've got your mark. Yeah, I think I do. Let's double check. There we go, I'm, I'm back. Sorry, I just had to quickly shave. I just grew a beard in the time it took you to do it. There we go, I'm back. Oh, it's probably dinner time soon, isn't it? Fancy some dinner? Let, you know what, let, it's actually crazy. Yeah. I've been here so long that my mark put, has dried out there. It looks put, like it's pot. Put your hand there, there. <laughs> put your hand there, look. See how I've got the weight of the charger there, yeah? You're gonna get some climbers forearms. Climb one, hold that, pinch that point, level it up, because that's not gonna move. Now I'm gonna hold it there for you. Okay, because I'm really nice, yeah. nice guy. You check your marks. No, I think the best, the best way to train, do you know how I learned to swim? Got thrown in a river with my feet tied. Guess what? I'm still a really bad swimmer, but I appreciate the lesson. I'm mentally <laughs> scarred for life, but guess what? I still appreciate the lesson. Okay, so how are you going to fix it? What are you going to do? I'm over there, I'm chatting to the customer, doing my thing. What are you, yeah. You're over here fixing the charge point. What, what are you going to fix it with? How are you going to stick it to the wall? You've got some glue, you've got some duct tape. You can, yeah, I was it. thinking duct tape, but duct tape? I guess okay. the next option... That's more of a um, Bundy electrical type thing. Oh, it's it? probably, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we don't really work like that. I wouldn't really know. Fixings. Mm. Mm. Sorry. Oh, 5.5, .5. Bold, bold move. What, what colour raw plug are you going to go for with a 5.5? Go for red. Oh, go for a red, okay. Yeah. Well, that's nice. Let me open it up for you. I'm not here. The case just opened itself. I don't like the tone of your voice. It's like I picked the wrong size. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's have a little bit of confidence in yourself. How many, how many broad I've plugs actually... are you going to need? Oh, there's some you selected earlier. Oh, yeah. sorry. You're going in for a position in Blue Peter now. Right. Okay. There is the drill. There oh, the drill. What, what mode are you going to, what mode are you going to stick it in? That seems mm. to make sense. A nice drill and hammer. I think, Sick. I think we should go for that. So if I was mounting this, I would line it up, eye it, put it in, screw it in. Made that look easy. Score out of 10 for your first time doing it, 10 out of 10, because it was full confidence and full effort. If you were an electrician, it'd be, it'd be a one. Um, <laughs> but you're not, so 10 out of 10. Yeah, we just have to be really careful lining it up and marking it, you know, because mm -hmm. I say measure twice, cut once. You don't really often have much room for luxury. I mean, it's not a big deal. Here, we could quite easily just move it along and fix it and it would be hidden, but you don't want to get into the habit of being able to work around bad markings. So yeah. next one we get, I think probably tomorrow or something, you can you can do it again. I just keep doing it until you get the knack for it. Because that's all it is. It's just a knack of just, you know, being able to do things. Yeah. Um, but great, well done, mate. He thinks it's funny. Well, guess what? This is going straight to my arms. What, just the crumble? There is a whole cookie. No, there. no, that'll do. I don't want the rest of the cookie. Oh, I'm all right, yeah. Oh. I'm fairly there, so I don't eat it mm. <laughs> later. I think rather than cut the duct, I'm gonna bring the duct along like that and just pin it into place there with a bit of galv strip. <laughs> foraging it's not cookie. These berries are actually really tasty. Although my legs are highly allergic to them. I actually did do foraging on the weekend, for real. I went down to Wales, down to St. David's. Absolutely beautiful. If any of our viewers are from there, hit us up. Give me a house, please. I did loads of um, sea foraging. It turns out that there's no poisonous kelp. All the seaweed that grows there, you can eat all of it. And it's awesome. Some of it tastes like garlic. Some of it tasted like absolutely disgusting lawn trimmings but all of it was rich in iodine and you can guarantee that all of it was eaten by me like a little underwater cow mowing their lawns oh, mm. you left your cookie there by the way I'm trying to snake me with it i just put it in my mouth thinking it was a tomato and it's a cookie yeah i thought i just thought i left my celery under there earlier and i reached for it put it in my mouth <laughs> that's not celery that's a cookie i'm not letting that pass my lips no 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 no
trying these ideal pass-through crimpers and man that is so much easier i've not done a rj45 plug in ages but it's just brilliant because you don't have to try and make sure they all get to the end you can just pass it straight through you can double check and then crimp like i've never been more confident about a crimp it's pretty awesome stuff so i think this plugs in there somewhere i mean i've just crimped this very confidently but actually do you know what i've got a clue where this even wires into surely there's a plug somewhere is there an rj45 pot i don't like to resort to instructions but if we have to do that we have to do that Oh, so there is one. We haven't got that attachment. That is an oversight. Oh. That is not very good. So, could I have the rest of that cookie? Because you only had half, didn't you? Yeah, go for it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I did see some ants Did you put it back. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, genuinely. The ants got it. Oh man, they, they oh, took okay. it. No, no, just follow the, like, follow the line, it'll oh, be there yeah. somewhere. He claims that that is all that he ate, but that's all that's left. Um, Ruben, you're getting way too smart for my liking. <laughs> Slight issue. We have a lovely crimped RJ45 connector, which I've made off with love. Realise there's no RJ, RJ45 point there anymore. There has definitely been an oversight. They don't do hardwired CT connections anymore. Not Anderson's fault. If I paid attention to the last few I'd done, I would know that. But unfortunately, it's only via Wi-Fi that they do their internet. So what I'm going to do instead is put a little TP-Link booster on the wall there. I'm going to clip that cable along and out. I'll just have to put like a little PoE adapter or something in the, in the house. I'm going to have to just basically boost the signal out here. But then there is an advantage to that because his car has got a Tesla here. And at the minute there's no Wi-Fi so we can't do a lot of the updates and things because it won't connect because we're in such a rural area. But at least if I put a TP-Link booster there he can actually get Wi-Fi to his car as well as to the charger. So it does actually kill two birds with one stone. Oh, coffee's so much better black. Why do I never have it black? Try not to dislodge any stones. Aha, perfect. So we've hit just underneath next to the internet point. So my plan is to put a little RJ45 socket there and then we'll patch out of that up into the Wi Fi router. Yep, got it. Basically the plan is we want to have our lunch, but I don't want to stop and have lunch until I've got to a point where I'm comfortable to finish the job in the day. Because otherwise you're not really going to enjoy your break, are you, if, you, if you're worrying about not finishing the job. I've got that hole drilled into that cavity there. I want to get this through to the consumer unit, but it's got to go through this ridiculously thick flint wall, which I just need to widen out the hole. And then I've already got that data cable through, so I want to neatly clip that along the bottom behind that bush and in. And then once we've got that into position and that into position, I can chill a little bit. Got it? It's right down low. I was close to them tails. Go on, pull them out. I need to double check we haven't touched them tails. I don't know why they've done that. They've brought the, the mains cables right out the way, but the tails, they've gone round there, up and out to the consumer unit. So I'm gonna have to check now that I've not damaged them. Nice one, that'll do. So that's the cable to there. I'll get some thick rods. I'll try and rod it through now under the stairs. See if you get your arm right in there. Oh, is the rod there? Yeah. Oh, awesome. First try. <laughs> right, so we've got the cable in under the stairs, which is good. It's terminated at the charger end. And now we're in here in a bit of Bruce Lee style electrical. There we go. Oh, I think, oh, I've got so many little slices on my hand. I'm going to cleat that in underneath the stair line. I'm going to pop it into the side there, into the consumer unit. And then we've got a spare way on the main switch. And I've got one of these. I, I can't get hold of an NSB Wilex breaker, but I've got some NXB breakers, which actually fit into the board quite nicely still. So that should be all right. Lo siento. Porto. Cara. Bueno, sombre. All right, Ruben. How do you reckon you feel about cleating that cable on your own. I 
I don't know when I'll learn not to use these stupid gimmicky tools. Hacksaw, junior hacksaw. I've never once in my life used a junior hacksaw and thought, I wish there was an easier way to do this. Never, because it is as easy as it gets. Why do I bother wasting my time with these stupid things, you know? Maybe it's just me that's using it wrong on these smaller cables, but pretty much every time I do it, I screw it up, I end up having to do it with my junior hacksaw and carefully take it back another centimeter. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So anyway, our, um, our tool of the day is this, it's the Nipex um, Tubix cutter, which you can also use in SWA. So you'll find that in the link to that in the description below. This has been the absolute pain in the unmentionables. It's just the worst design board where someone's retrofitted RCBOs, the neutral bars behind the RCBOs, and they've left all the tails, which I've cut a bit shorter just to make space at full length so there's just no room to do or add anything all of the earth bar screws are hidden behind this and all of the neutral screws are hidden behind the rcbo's so i mean even if it wasn't rcbo's it's just an appalling design because i can't get to anything not at all impressed this is just being an absolute pig at least one thing i can say is that my paperwork is not a pig and that's because I use Tradeify. <laughs> so I won't have to worry about all the invoicing and things. Jordan's actually away on holiday at the minute, but even still it'll be very easy to handle the paperwork and inquiries and things because it's, it's all run online through Tradeify. So if you would like to try it, we have a code which we'll leave in the description below to get 50% off your first three months. So you can give it a little taster so you get on with it. just reinstating their house, which we have been taken to pieces. So I'm just mixing up some mortar, smushing it down into those cut into the cracks, a bit more seamless than silicon. I don't think I'm going to put any cleats or anything on this. They've not done it there. And I know obviously we don't work to the lower standard, we work above that, but I don't really want to put any cleats in this flint. Um, and I mean, I could maybe put a screw there, that might pin it slightly, but I think, you know, for the sake of like a centimetre of thing coming up, I don't want to permanently mark any of their stones or anything, so I'm going to leave that as it is. I'll probably get absolutely murdered for it, but oh well. All right, so that cable entry is sealed up now. You see, I've managed to sort of chuck a bit of the dust on there to get that all the same colour and blend right in. We'll just seal up that duct quickly. Right, so here it is. Sort of done the best we can today. We're definitely gonna have to come back. So didn't realize that the uh, new Andersons don't have an ethernet port. So we're gonna have to come back and we're gonna have to fit a TP link next to it. That's the Anderson on the wall. It's working at the minute. It's just working as a dumb charger because we're not gonna be able to make it smart charge unless it has Wi-Fi out here. So we're gonna come back and do those couple of little bits, a little tiny bit of snagging and then we're done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it's been a good one for you. It's been good getting Ruben to be a little bit more hands-on. He's done all that cable himself and he's done a really lovely job of it. So it's great because we've just sort of slowly been able to entrust him with more so it'll get more and more useful. But thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.